Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, let's quickly talk about the Clippers. I believe it's over for the Clippers this year in the playoffs. Right? Even if the league comes down hard on Donald Sterling and suspends him and fines him the maximum, which I believe is a million dollars, right? Even if they suggest that Sterling sell his team, there's too much drama that has gone down for this team to recover. Not that I believe in the Golden State Warriors either in terms of having a chance to win this year. Right, I feel that this is a doomed series. If you're a Clipper right now, and let's say you respect the coach, Doc Rivers, you've got to be concerned when Doc Rivers at press conferences, you know, acknowledges that Donald Sterling wanted to meet with him and that he turned down the meeting and that he doesn't know what's going to happen in the future. Understand the team can have a lot of talent and can fall apart. There's no guarantee that the coach or any of the star players will want to be back next year. There's also no guarantee that any superstar in this league is going to want to sign with the Clippers when there are other teams in the league that don't have the stain of the owner's remarks. So, as talented as the Clippers are, and I consider the Clippers to be very talented, I just feel that there's too much going on for this team to focus fully as they'd have to on winning a championship. Occasionally you do have dysfunctional teams win championships. The early 1970s Oakland A's come to mind, right? But that's rare. That's the exception, not the rule, and I don't want to be betting on the exception. Nor does my cat, apparently. All right, let's talk about Lucas Matisse against John Molina this fight gets a wow let's talk about it Matisse fought a mid-range hooker in Danny Garcia right the fight before this one and lost to Danny now I call fighters with Danny Garcia style mid-range hookers right they prefer throwing hooks to throwing straight punches they prefer to do so at mid-range. Just because the guy's a hooker doesn't mean that the guy wants to fight inside. Right? Boxing's about angles. It's about how you get leverage on punches, right, in certain places. Now, mid-range hookers need space to operate. Danny Garcia is good at moving around the ring with his legs, right? He's somewhat agile, but he's doling out most of his punishment at mid-range. Now, I had a pre-fight video up, in fact, it's still up, on that Garcia-Matisse fight. I went with Danny Garcia, right? In fact, I think I sold that as a premium pick here online under a different sales model, right? But... The point is, at that time, I didn't think Matisse would know how to handle Danny Garcia. I thought that was going to be a shootout between two heavy-handed guys. Matisse gets dropped in that fight and loses. Now Matisse fights John Molina, who's a mid-range hooker. Doesn't have Danny Garcia's hand speed. Right? Not that Garcia's hand speed is that blinding. But Molina is slower hand speed wise, in my opinion, than Danny Garcia. Molina, like Garcia, is a huge puncher. Molina, like Garcia, is a mid range hooker. In other words, he's throwing bombs. But again, the bombs are of the hook variety. He's not throwing a combination. Right, you know, left hand, straight left, right hand, then mixed up, uppercuts and stuff like that. He's not Ray Leonard. He's a hooker. 
right? So he wants to get you in front of him so he can literally dig down, plant his feet, shift his weight, and throw bombs, right? In other words, the leverage is key, right? For those of you thinking about what makes great defense, it's when you're able to upset the other fighter's cadence and not give him an opportunity to get leverage, right? Well, let me just say, the last few rounds of this fight were spectacular. Matisse, in my opinion, throws down the blueprint on how to beat a mid-range hooker, right? Let me say, I know I've had problems in the past with Dan Goosen, but I've always respected Joe Goosen, right, who's an excellent trainer who's in Molina's corner. Joe Goosen has gotten Molina about as far as he can, right? Molina's never going to have the ability to throw short combinations or to really shorten his punches, right? Because again, that takes balance and timing that takes a long time to develop. Molina's never going to have blistering foot speed. So, of course, what Goosen has Molina doing is really maximizing his opportunities, hanging outside, knowing when to take a step forward and throw hooks. Right? Well, what Matisse does is what I've always criticized Vladimir Klitschko for not doing. Matisse literally shortens his punches. He takes a step inside. He's not running from a mid-range hooker. He's up on him. It makes a breathtaking fight. He's inside the tornado. right? He gets up on him. He shortens his punches. Then he starts going to work. You've heard me in videos talk about how I like to see fighters who can fight inside. right? Very few fighters in the sport are great inside. I like to see fighters who can lean you up on their shoulder and go to work. It takes a lot of effort because you have to shorten your punches and those punches have to have bang. And when you're inside, you have to find a way to smother the other guy's punches so you don't get hit, right? Because a clever opponent might be able to do a quick step back and then tee off on you, right? An even more clever opponent might be able to get the fight in the middle of the ring and then twirl you, right? Use your front foot against you because you're trying to get inside. The guy might literally just keep darting laterally, right? Setting you up for his own hooks. Well, here, Matisse gets inside in a fight in which he was dropped, right? Earlier in the fight. He gets inside later. He's practically diving inside. He shortens his punches. And he does things inside that you need to do to hit the target. He has a great uppercut. He's going to the body. He makes himself small. Not that he's that tall to begin with. But he literally is tucking his head. Right? He's inside on Molina. He gets Molina pinned on the rope so Molina can't stand back. Molina can't circle like Vladimir Klitschko did against Alex Lipe. Right? Klitschko always has real estate behind him. One of the secrets to the Manny Pacquiao, Marquez fights, is Marquez is the kind of guy, even though he's comfortable off at the side of the ring, he's the kind of guy who always seems to have room to back up. Right? Here, Molina doesn't have that gift. He ends up on the ropes because it's been a tough fight. And we're now in the later rounds of that tough fight. I'm telling you, when Matisse gets inside of mid-range hooker Molina's arms, it's calm inside for him. He's not getting hit with much. It's only when Molina is back up off of him after a break that they're actually 
trading blows. So let me say this, right? Matisse is doing it all, right? He's changed his game. It's clear that that Danny Garcia fight left an imprint on him. And he now has an advanced tactical strategy on how to destroy a mid-range hooker, right? You get up close on him, you shorten up your punches, you keep him pinned, you go to work, right? Matisse, who is a great puncher, right? He's a great puncher from distance. He's also a great puncher up close. Right? What he shows you in the latter part of this Molina fight is that now he's knowing how to, in very tough fights, right, hunt the other guy down, get him on the ropes, avoid the other guy's power punches. Let me say that I was surprised Molina came out for the last round. Shortly before that last round, the doctor went into the corner to see what was going on. There's a testy exchange between Molina's corner and the doctor, right? Molina, who looked terrible the round before, obviously wanted to continue. The doctor allows him to continue, right? But what I liked with Matisse is even after the fight continues into the other round, Matisse gets inside and is throwing hard punches, right? So, let me just say that if there's a Danny Garcia, Matisse rematch, I'm not taking Danny Garcia in that fight. I think Matisse has completely recharged his batteries. Let me say too, the Floyd Mayweather, Marcus Maidana fight. I don't believe Marcus Maidana can fight inside as well as Lucas Matisse at this point, right? Because when Matisse is inside, he's throwing straight punches. He's lowering a shoulder, he's throwing uppercuts right the punches are straight right he not only is muscling up his man but the punches don't have much of a loop on them by contrast i would say marcus madonna inside his forte is throwing punches at odd angles right he has a punch where he lifts his hand up here and then he comes down right I believe Matisse has faster foot speed than Marcus Maidana. I believe if you keep Maidana on the outside, Maidana can't do much against you. I believe if you study films of Maidana, he's easier to defend inside once you realize that he's awkward and he throws punches at odd angles with a loop. Right? I can't say that about Lucas Matisse. So, let me close in saying this. My videos have dates on them for a reason. Right? It's because as fighters evolve, my opinion evolves. Right? I believe this fighter is not the same fighter who lost Danny Garcia. I believe he has cleaned up and improved his inside game where now he can destroy mid-range hookers like John Molina. So, Matisse is calling out Danny Garcia. I think that rematch would be one hell of a fight. Let's hope it happens. And if Matisse ends up in the ring opposite, let's say, Keith Thurman, or some other guys who like to hook you to death and who like to have a little cushion between them and you, I believe Matisse is going to be a live underdog if he is the underdog in those fights because this guy has figured out how to get inside of a mid-range hooker how to defend himself and then when he's inside he's throwing punches as hard as he does outside right Matisse has 
a good strategy against mid-range hookers. You saw that with the finish here. Very economical. Devastating. Right? The point is simply a guy can look great in the ring. But if you look at film and realize he can't fight inside, then the guy who can get inside against him has a decided advantage. Right? Matisse, who has, in my opinion, already faced and roughed up some big names in the sport. Right? Lamont Peterson. Uh, I was surprised at that fight. I thought Peterson was the more advanced fighter. Uh, Devin Alexander. I thought Alexander was lucky that fight took place in St. Louis. Right? The Zab Judah fight. I'm sure Judah was very grateful that fight didn't have a 13th round. Right? All I'm saying, folks, is this guy now is even better than he was then on the inside. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.